the idea here being that our company is actually deleveraging? Are they actually becoming more credit worthy and perhaps justifying the tightening in spreads? Matt Brill of Invesco, head of U.S. investment grade and senior portfolio manager. Do you think that that's what's going on here, that they are actually becoming more credit worthy companies? Hey, good morning, everybody. Yeah. I do think that you're seeing just the fundamentals get better and better with the U.S. economy, but you're also seeing corporations really try to figure out how to get rid of last year's debt. And last year's debt was all about survival, and this year they're really kind of pivoted. And so we've seen AT&T, we've seen GE, UPS are all big names looking to pay down debt. So overall, that, that's pretty good for the market. Um, I would say you know, valuations are very, very challenged, though, but the fundamental, fundamentals are going to keep getting better here. What does the maturity profile of these massive companies look like now, Matt? So most of these companies have actually termed out their debt. We call this, you know, kind of kicking the can down the road or, or really just making sure they don't have any near-term debt maturity. So the average duration of the U.S. corporate market continues to get longer. Um, that's bad from a mark-to-market -market standpoint. That's because it means there's more duration, more volatility potentially. But it's very good from a fundamental standpoint because it means they don't have near-term debt maturities that they have to worry about if the market were to seize up again. So all in, you know, I'd say that's a real a net positive. Does this play into this theme, if the same is true of high yield, that we're stripping out the cyclicality from this market, just how sensitive these markets are to a given turn in the economy? I, I think so from, a, from, from the terming out of maturities, but also, you know, as Lisa was mentioning, which is the Federal Reserve. And all the Fed didn't really buy high yield. They did buy some crossover names. Really just the fact that the Fed was there I think eliminated tail risk um, to the corporate credit market. And so that whether or not this will be permanent is, is certainly up for debate. But we do believe that from an overall beta standpoint, um, you know, it, it, it means that you're, you're more comfortable investing in, the, investing in the investment grade market and a little bit in the high yield market as well. Matt Brill, I, I look at all this and I go, is this 2006? Is this 2006? It's not. It's it's 2021, just to be clear. <laughs> but it it, it 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 has some resemblances to it, but but not really. So 2006, 2007, you had the TXU LBO just a few weeks ago. You had the Medline LBO. The yeah. Medline LBO, it, it has about 50 percent equity. So TXU, I can't remember the exact number, but it was around 15 percent equity. So you went from 15 to 50. So there's a lot more equity. Um, the private equity is having to put up more, more, more equity into the deals to get these deals done. They, they, they don't want to go through TXU. TXU, they made some money off of, but at the end of the day, you know, the market wouldn't fund a deal like that today. I really don't think they would. They did, however, fund a $500 million micro strategy deal to buy Bitcoin. So, you know, maybe that's a little different. I, I'd like to say, though, that there, they, they, there is a lot more prudency in this market. There are people that are really not going to make dumb decisions, I don't think, on the, on the investor side of things. But they are being forced to invest, and they are being forced to invest at a rich valuations, but not into bad companies, just necessarily maybe not as much yield as they would like. So where's the opportunity? I mean, I, you know, I know we're 60-40 in my portfolio. I mean, John's portfolio, excuse me, is 98-2. If I got 2% in fixed <laughs> income, what do I do? Well, John's a really young guy, so he doesn't really need a lot That's of true. fixed he income does. in his, in, in his portfolio. <laughs> That's <laughs> so Hell, do but something about this. Kid. For, <laughs> never again. Hell, do something. For, there, there is opportunity still in the reopening trade. We're, we're seeing um, names like Boeing today get a large deal for, from United. You know, they have some negative news out as well. But for the most part, the reopening trade lives on. The reflation trade, you're calling, well, maybe not calling for $100. There, Tom, but we, we do think that, in, that 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 commodity prices go higher, and with that, there are certainly opportunities with the emerging market world as well. So, emerging markets um, that that have more correlation to um, commodity prices and the asset prices overall going up, um, you know, we think is good. So, there are play, ways to make money in the in the corporate market right now, particularly in investment grade um, around the globe. Um, but it's a lot more selective, and it's it's not the 2020 trade of just riding the beta. You have to really look under every stone to find to find value out there. It's interesting. There's sort of contradictory messages here. On one hand, you have to look under every stone and be idiosyncratic and, and, and select securities. On the other hand, it's a macro trade. I mean, at a certain point, credit trades in tandem with treasuries, period, full stop, because ultimately it's whether the Fed comes in and backs things and how uh, duration sensitive some of these bonds have become, no? Yes, that's right. And so duration has really been the, the you know the, the key theme of the year. And you look up and, and, and you know, we don't have equity like returns this year. But if you look at most corporate bonds, they're, they're essentially flat on the year in terms of total returns. So it hasn't been the disaster that many might have predicted um, at the start of the year when we were seeing interest rates go higher. 
Um, so I, I would say if the, the all eyes are on the Fed in terms of tapering, all eyes are on the Fed in terms of whether they're going to have liftoff. Um, the foreigners continue to buy a lot of bonds. And if the Fed does lift off, that makes, makes hedging costs go higher. If hedging costs go higher, the foreign buyers will buy less. So to us, that's really the key thing to watch is, is when will the Fed hike? Because when they do, that will likely make it more expensive for foreigner buyers and, and, and less attractive to them to buy our, our higher yielding bonds here versus their negative yielding bonds back home.